All right, there we go. Now we are talking. So we are recording and I'm speaking to you live. Now we're killing two birds with one stone or feeding two birds with one piece of bread, whatever way you want to look at it. Okay, so we're talking about the odd way to crush cravings. So scope down, periscope download. Cool, nice. I'm gonna just make a note of that. Scope down. I'm just writing this down, thanks. Awesome. Okay, so uh, cravings. How many of you guys suffer from cravings? Sugar cravings, food cravings, anything like that. And if so, what is the one thing that is like your crux? What's up, Jackie? So what's the one thing? For me, it's pizza and chocolate. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, James is saying it's been bad this week. Every day, oh my God. Me, sweets, even fruits, pizza and sugar right now, in fact. Nice. Okay, good. So I just want to make sure you guys are human beings because if you suffer from these cravings, don't worry, you're not alone. Everyone does. And uh, sugar and bread, welcome to the club. So the reason I share this with you is because I grew up for most of my life eating a terrible, terrible foods. Uh, I'm talking about all the foods that you guys are talking about right here were pretty much my daily staples. So breads, pastas, cereals, cheese, uh, processed, and all those hot dogs that are not even real meat. Uh, like chocolate, milk, all sorts of stuff. Not good. So uh, that was part of the reason that I had really low energy and asthma and eczema and digestive issues and eventually losing my hair when I was 17 to an autoimmune condition because eventually when you bombard your body with that kind of nonsense over time, eventually it just repels. So here's the thing. Um, if you're dealing with cravings, there are a number of things that are happening inside your body. That are, It's not a willpower thing. There are things happening at the level of your hormones, within your brain, various neurotransmitters, and obviously there are social, cultural situations that are taking place as well. So let me give you an example. So don't worry, I'm not going to rush to get to the point. So that's if you don't like this, then you can leave. No offense, right? But that's just the way it's going to go. So... Um, in Spain, so for instance, sorry, before I get to that, uh, women, a recent study actually found that it was a journal of nutrition study in 2003, it wasn't very recent, but 2003, found that 100% of women, yes, it will be on YouTube, 100% of women in America who are surveyed raised their hand to say, yes, I have cravings for chocolate. That's, that's a pretty... I've never seen anyone say 100% of anything. So anyways, we know that based on this study that you know, even if it's not 100% over the entire US, we know that it, chocolate cravings are a big thing amongst especially American women. In Spain, however, what's interesting is that Spanish women eat more chocolate than American women and they don't report craving it nearly as much. So one of the big myths with cravings is that they are a sign that you're deficient in something. So if you crave sugar, or sorry, if you crave uh, chocolate, it's been said that you are deficient in magnesium. Have you guys heard that before? Yes or yes? The reality and the science shows that that's actually completely untrue. And there was a, a, big, a big amount of research done out of the University of, uh, uh, I think it was UCLA, and they basically kind of debunk that and the whole idea is that it's not just it's not a nutrient deficiency there's a there's a complex relationship of things going on inside our bodies and our brains and our physiology and what i'm here to tell you is that if you suffer from any of this stuff it's again it's it's not your fault right there are things happening that are you're not even aware of so anyways i want to share this cool technique with you um and i'll share actually a bonus one with you as well so what you want to do is what the research has also shown, other research has shown, is that when we crave foods, it's because we have a very strong, vivid mental image of that food in our minds. And what some research studies have done is they've taken, so let's, let's take the example of, let's say you're craving chocolate right now. I want you to think about in your mind, your mind being a projector, a projector right? And the screen upon which it's playing is your life. And what ends up on that screen eventually ends up in your life. That's just the way it goes, right? Everything in this world was once in here. These lights, this phone, 
everything, okay? So if you have a mental, if you, if you, I want you to become a little bit more aware of what's happening inside your mind when you have a craving. So when you have a craving, most likely there is a strong mental image of that food. So let's use chocolate as an example. I want you to think about what that looks like. Okay, is that image of chocolate, is it up close? Is it bright? Is it full of color? Can you, is it kind of right in your face in terms of right up on that screen? Or is it far off in the distance? Right, far away off in the distance? Is it small? Is it black and white? Is it muted? And why I'm asking you this is because that thing way off in the distance that you can barely see, like that little thing on the wall right there, if that is a healthy food choice, right, let's just say that's a green smoothie, the likelihood of us drinking that green smoothie or making that green smoothie is slim to none. However, if we took that same image and we brought it right up here and it was smack, boom, in our face, full color, dynamic, right there, shouting, eat me, eat me, eat me, that's what we focus on, right? So you've probably heard of what you focus on, you will get more of. It's simple law of attraction. It's just the way the universe works. So if you're focusing on chocolate, that is what you are going to want to have. So in some studies, what they've done is they simply said, okay, instead of focusing on what you want to, what you're craving, is we'd like you to focus on the smell of eucalyptus, or we want you to focus on a rainbow. So just create a mental image in your mind of a rainbow, and smell what it would smell like to smell eucalyptus. So it's a simple shift in focus. So moving away from thinking about the food, because we've all had this where we're working or we're sitting down and all of a sudden we get this, it's almost like we get side, we get like, it's almost like we get sideswiped by this thought of like, oh my God, I want a piece of chocolate cake, or oh my God, I want pizza, or oh my God, I want this. And it becomes a compulsive, obsessive type of thought that we can't get out of our head. And that's because we tend to focus on it, right? And the reason we focus on it is because we know that as we get closer to consuming or possibly consuming that food, there is an increase in dopamine in our brain. And dopamine is the neurotransmitter that is running your life for the most part. They have found that animals who have been, or have had their dopamine centers and neural pathways removed have no motivation to even eat. Okay, that's, that's how powerful dopamine is. So dopamine is the reward neurotransmitter in your brain and it's, it goes off like fireworks in the anticipation of a, of a reward, not the actual consumption of it. So it's the thinking of it and the almost achieving it or eating it that lights up the dopamine pathways in our brain and that is the big reward center. Now the thing to understand is that it doesn't matter if we're talking about chocolate, sugar, alcohol, cocaine, marijuana, tobacco, anything, it's the exact same pathway. Gambling, same thing. All these addictive behaviors lead through the same neural pathway in our brain. So again, if you're struggling with this stuff, you just have to become first and foremost aware of what's going on and then it's a decision. It's I'm aware that I'm craving this. Do I allow myself to go down this path? Because if I do, if I do it's, you know, I know what it's going to lead to. I'm going to consume that food. I'm going to feel good temporarily and then I'm not going to feel so good about myself, right? So you have to really make that decision. The alternative is you catch yourself in the act. You recognize that okay, here's what's going on, here's the image in my head, here's what I'm craving, now I'm gonna consciously decide to focus on something else. And this is tough, right? This, this decision is tough because the one, the one way, which is the usual path, going down the craving path, having the sugar, having the chocolate, having the bread, that is gonna make you feel good, right? That's gonna light up that dopamine center. That's gonna make you feel good temporarily and your brain knows that. So to make a conscious decision to move away from imminent reward to long-term benefit for you is very challenging. So this is where there's a little bit of willpower involved, but it all starts with awareness in the present moment, right? 
So does that make sense to you guys? It's really shifting focus of away from the craving, the mental image in your head of the food you want and shifting focus to thinking about a pink elephant, right? Or the rainbow. So I work in a kitchen and that bad stuff is always in my face. Well, that's the thing. Environment is always going to trump willpower. Okay, write that down. If you are in an environment where you are surrounded by these foods, it doesn't matter how hard you try, it doesn't matter what kind of mental imagery you use, eventually you will cave in. And that's why it's really important to set up your environment to win because if you don't, you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle and eventually willpower loses out. It's like your phone. If you keep using your phone, the battery drains, right? Doesn't it? It's the same thing. Our minds, our brains, we have a certain, we have a finite amount of willpower every single day. And that's why at the end of the day, it's usually tougher for us to make healthier choices because we've had a long day. We've been resisting temptations. We've been under stress. We've been making a lot of decisions and all of that stuff taxes our decision making centers in our brain and our willpower. And by the time we get home at night, the last thing we want to do is figure out what to eat. So if we're stressed out, if we're anxious, if we're, if we've got blood sugar irregularities, right, that's even going to, that's going to make things even worse. Now we're just gonna go for the quick fix because we just want to increase our serotonin levels, right? Which gives us that kind of calming and soothing feeling. So again, I hope this makes sense for you guys. And again, it's a simple technique in theory, in practice, it's obviously, it's a little more challenging, but I think, you know, this is probably one of the most powerful things you can do in any aspect of your life, whether you want to, you know, you just mentioned there, James, that you're looking to change your career. The power is, is in focusing on the solution, not the problem, right? So here the, the craving would be the problem and the solution would be whatever else you want to do instead. So you have to shift your focus from the problem to the solution and focus all of your attention on the solution. Because not only do you move your body and your action in that manner, but you also tap into the kind of metaphysical powers of the universe to really bring things to you that are going to resonate with that vibration, right? I know that's getting a little bit metaphysical, but that's just the way it goes, right? That's the way the world works. That's the way the universe works. So focus on what you want. If you want chocolate and you want to go down that route, then just keep focusing on it. But if you don't, become aware of it and shift your mindset, right? Shift what you're focusing on, change that image in your mind, focus on smelling the eucalyptus or whatever else you need to do to really get out of that, out of that space. All right, guys. Well, that is all for today. And the reason I say this is an odd technique is because, you know, I talk about, there's other things that I'll talk about with you in the future with respect to cutting cravings, but this is something that not a lot of people think about. And if you go to most websites, it's like, hey, drink more water, blah, blah, blah. Like, come really, uh, it's, it's just, it's nonsense, right? So I want to give you some stuff that's not really commonly discussed. And again, if you want to lose belly fat or just general overall body fat, you really have to get the cravings under control because if we're constantly eating ice cream and breads and all that kind of stuff, it's not really going to help your waistline or your health. Cool. So that is all for me today. As you can tell, I've got the studio set up here. I've actually got these uh, things on the wall here. Those are uh, acoustic foam. This room has a lot of echo. So we had to, like, I've got foam kind of all over the place in here. It's kind of, it's weird. Uh, but this is where I shoot most of my videos on the white wall back here, uh, right there. That's all whiteboard. So I have whiteboard paints and that's where I do a lot of my kind of writing videos. So I'm going to do a bunch of videos this afternoon. I've got some great content coming for you guys up on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, it's Yelkame one So it's the same username as this Periscope channel, but just add the number one to it. Because again, we can't make things easy for you, right? It would make a lot more sense if it was Yuri Yelkame, but it's not. So Yelkame one on YouTube, you can go there now and join us. And uh, this video obviously will be up there as well by tomorrow. And I'm recording most of these Periscope Hangouts so that, you know, not only you can benefit, but everyone else can benefit from these same ideas. So thanks for joining me, guys. Have an awesome lunch. If you're on East Coast time, if you're on the West Coast, welcome. Good morning. Have a nice breakfast. And if you're in Europe, have a good evening, a good dinner, and I'll speak with you guys tomorrow. Ciao, guys.